In this video, we're going to learn how to solve for one variable using fact families. Okay, today we're going to be solving for one variable using fact families. So here you might see a problem as you begin algebra that looks like x plus 5 equals 13. And we're trying to solve for x. So x is essentially standing for a big old question mark. However, we aren't going to just guess at our answer, we are going to use fact families. And I hope you remember, uh, for this fact family, we're going to be doing addition and subtraction first. So for this one, we're going to look at a sample fact family. So if you see in this problem, I have 3 plus 9 equals 12. And if I flip flop the 9 and the 3, that's going to give me another partner in this fact family, where I would have 9 plus 3 equals 12. But in addition to this, I'm going to use the inverse operation of addition, which is subtraction, and I'm going to look at my other two partners. So I would take the larger number of the answer in the addition portion, and that would have to begin my subtraction problem. So another member of this family would be 12 minus 3 equals 9, and the final member of this family would be 12 minus 9 equals 3. We're going to use that same, uh, same method to solve for x up here at the top. So if I were to identify the fact families for this problem at the top, I would start with x plus 5 equals 13, and I'm going to list all four of my members. So the next member that I would have is 5 plus x equals 13, and then I would move over to the subtraction, and it would give me 13 minus x equals 5, and then 13 minus 5 equals x. My goal here is to get the variable on the other side of the equal sign. So all I have to do then is solve the problem and I should get my answer. 13 minus 5 equals 8, therefore x must equal 8. However, one of the key bonuses in solving problems like this is I can always find out if my answer is true by simply placing my answer, which here I have 8, in for my x. So if I take that 8 and put it in here, and then bring everything else down, it should make sense if I solve the problem. So if I put in the 8, I can get 8 plus 5, and that equals 13. So I will know that my answer is correct. Let's move on to this next problem. The next problem has y minus 4 equals 10. So I'm going to begin with the first two members of that fact family. So it would be in the subtraction, y minus 4 equals 10 again. And then I'm going to do the other subtraction. Now when it's subtraction or division, whatever starts here is going to have to stay there. So now I would say y minus 10 equals 4. And the inverse operation for subtraction is addition. So now I'm going to have two addition problems. So it would be 4 plus 10 equals y. And 10 plus 4 equals y. Now I can look and see that either of these two numbers, because they have y on the other side of that equal sign, it's going to be, it, if I solve either of these problems, it will get me to my answer. So in this case, my answer 4 plus 10 equals 14. So y must equal 14. But again, in order to test this, I have to put that back into my problem. So if y equals 14, then I should be able to put the 14 in for my y and add the rest of the problem, and it should make sense. In this case, 14 minus 4 equals 10 does make sense, so y must equal 14. Now we're going to move on to some multiplication and division options. So we're still going to be using the fact family. Now you may remember that this dot is going to represent multiplication. So the reason why we have this is because we used to use an x. However, when we're using variables, it's hard for us to tell whether or not the x is representing multiplication or if it's representing a variable. You may also see this problem written as in 3w equals 12 or w3 equals 12, because when you have the number next to a variable, this also represents multiplication. So if I were looking at this problem, I would have to say w times 3 equals 12. So I'm going to look at my fact family. 
for multiplication, and I'm going to use the fact family 3 times 5 equals 15. So the partner for multiplication, I'm just going to be flip-flopping the 5 and the 3, and that's going to give me 5 times 3 equals 15. However, when I move to the inverse operation, which is also, or which in this case is division, I have to make sure that just like subtraction, I put the answer here at the beginning. So for example, I would have 15 divided by 5 equals 3. And then for my last member of this fact family, I would have 15 divided by 3 equals 5. All right, let's look back at my original problem. So here I have w times 3 equals 12. So I'm going to begin with the multiplication members of this fact family. And it would be w times 3 equals 12 and then flip-flop them as 3 times w equals 12. But now when I move to my division portion, I'm going to have 12 divided by w equals 3, and 12 divided by 3 equals w. Only one of these options actually puts the w on the other side of the equal sign, and it's this last one here. And so if I am just to solve 12 divided by 3, I would get my answer of 4. So since 12 divided by 3 equals 4, then w would equal 4. But I won't know this for sure until I actually put it back in to my problem. So for example, I'm going to just put it right here. 4 times 3 equals 12. And I can see that that is true. So that must be my answer. Now as we consider this with division, first of all, let's address the way that I have this problem formatted. So I have it written as a fraction, and as you get into algebra, you're going to see it written more commonly this way. And what this problem actually represents is 8 divided by p equals 2. And just like a fraction, this fraction bar does represent division. So if I'm looking at 8 divided by p equals 2, I'm going to start and make my other fact families. So my other one for the division portion, I have to keep the 8 on the left side. and But I can flip-flop the p and the 2. So it would be 8 divided by 2 equals p. Now I'm going to move over to the multiplication portion. And for those two, now I'm going to use the two of smaller numbers here. And I'm going to have 2 times p equals 8. 8 is going to be the answer both times. And then p times 2 equals 8. Only one of these answers successfully puts the variable on the other side of the equal sign. So this is the one that's going to help me to solve this. So now if I solve 8 divided by 2, I'm going to get the answer of 4. So that's what I'm going to start with, 4 equals p. But now I have to put it back into my problem and see if it works. So I'm going to say 8 divided by 4 equals 2 to see if that makes sense, or 8 divided by 4 equals 2. In both cases, it does make sense, so my answer is correct. Now we're going to move on to my last one, and I want to caution you because this problem is going to offer you probably the most complication. Many times we try to get away without doing the work, and if we see the number 12 here and we see the number 3 here, we're going to automatically want to think that our answer is going to be 4. However, we're going to still have to solve the problem to see if that is correct. So what this is representing is n divided by 3 equals 12. So if I were to do my fact family, I would then have n divided by 12 equals 3. And now I'm going to do my two multiplication. So my multiply, I'm going to be multiplying these numbers by each other. So now I would have 12 times 3 equals n and 3 times 12 equals n. Now if you look at these two answers down here, I can see that I should be able to solve this and solve it by multiplying 12 by 3 or 3 by 12. Therefore, I'm going to see that my answer is actually 36 if that is the case. And so now I need to go put that back into my answer to see if 36 makes sense or if 4 makes sense. 
So as I put it back into my answer here, 4 divided by 3 does not really make sense, because if I do this, it's also going to be 4 thirds equals 12. And 4 divided by 3 is not going to equal 12. But if I do 36 divided by 3, or 36 thirds, I am going to get my answer of 12. So I will see that my answer is 36. Now let's move on to a couple of problems that you can solve on your own. Pause the video, solve this problem, and then answer it. Did you get the answer of 3? Pause the video as you attempt to solve this problem. 7 minus n equals 3. Now check your answer. Hopefully you got 4. Now pause the video as you solve for n in this problem. n minus 10 equals 12. Did you get the answer of 22? And our final addition or subtraction problem, pause the video as you solve for n in 15 minus n equals 5. Did you get 10 as your answer? I hope so. Alright, let's move on. Now we're going to try some multiplication and division problems. So, pause the video as you attempt to solve for n with this problem, which is 6 times n equals 30. Were you able to find that n equals 5? For this one, you're going to solve for n in n times 3 equals 18. Were you able to get 6? Let's move on. Now we're going to move on to division. So now you're going to solve for n in this problem that is 14 divided by n equals 2. Pause the video as you solve this problem. Did you get 7? And for our last problem on our own, you're going to be solving n divided by 6 equals 4. Again, that's going to look like this. Or, if you wanted to see it with brackets, it would look like this. Go ahead and pause the video. Hopefully you were able to get 24. 24 divided by 6 equals 4. In this video, we were solving for one variable using fact families. 